Now, here we have our cam part programmed with iMachining. The next thing we should do is simulate the toolpath in its entirety just to verify one last time that everything is exactly what we want. If you've watched the Jumpstart series tutorials, which I'm assuming you did, then you'll notice that in this step I'll cover many of the same things regarding solid cam simulation options. In that case then, just consider this a refresher. So here again, we'll get a little more in-depth on simulation, including the interface. Then I'll show you how to easily generate a G-code file that can be used for machining this cam part. Now this is the last step in exercise number one, so let's finish up. To view the toolpath simulation, we'll use the solid cam manager this time. Now before we even open up the simulation control panel, take note that you can quickly view the wireframe toolpath from the cam tree. Clicking the checkbox next to the operations header displays the toolpath for all iMachining operations at once. And if you'd like to quickly view the toolpath for each individual operation, you can simply just click the checkbox next to that operation like so. Let's now take a look at the simulation control panel to see our options for further verification of the iMachining toolpath. Now to start the toolpath simulation for all the operations at once, or let's say we wanted to simulate only a select number of operations, we can easily select them in the cam tree by using the shift or control keys. For this exercise, we're just going to simulate all our operations. So to do that, right-click the operations header and choose Simulate. When the simulation control panel appears, we'll start with the HostCAD mode, which as you know is SolidCAM's default simulation mode. If it's not already enabled like mine is, click the Show Data button to display the simulation data window. This window gives us the feedback of many things including the current feed and spin rates, the time it takes to machine this cam part, and even the cutting angles of the tool all during playback. Now go ahead and click the Play button to start the toolpath simulation. As I mentioned earlier, you can set your desired playback speed using the simulation speed slider. Moving it to the left will slow the simulation speed down, and of course moving it to the right will speed the simulation up. Now we have a couple other playback options that you may find useful. The first option is single step mode. Each mouse click will move the tool through simulation one step at a time, and we can even watch these tool movements in our simulation data window. The second option I want you to know about is the operation step mode. Each mouse click will play through one operation at a time in sequential order from beginning to end. Clicking the button once will take us through only the iRough outside contour operation and stop, Clicking it again will simulate only the I finish operation and stop, and so on. Now, let's review some of these other buttons here at the top of the HostCAD tab. If the Show Tool 2D option is selected, the tool will be represented during simulation as a wireframe circle. Earlier, I mentioned that I had these next few buttons enabled. They are the Show Trail and Show Tool 3D buttons. The Show Holder button is automatically activated with the Show Tool 3D button. You can turn it off if you'd like, but I usually just leave it in the instance I define a holder. I like to see it during playback when running my simulations in the HostCAD mode. Whatever options you have enabled, they will be shown in the SolidWorks graphics area along with the displayed toolpath. You can even perform a solid verification of the iMachining toolpath directly on the model by enabling the Solid Verification checkbox. Go ahead and click the Play button once more to see what kind of result we get. So, as you can see, we have some pretty powerful toolpath simulation options at your fingertips, just in the HostCAD mode alone. And one more thing that you may want to do is change the toolpath colors, depending on your preferences. That can easily be done by clicking the Colors button. I set my preferred toolpath colors using the Solid Cam settings. You can also set them for this cam part here in the Simulation Colors dialog box. Since I already have mine set, I'll click Cancel. The next Solid Cam simulation mode we'll use is Solid Verify. 
This is another popularly used mode that enables us to see the cutting tool as it moves through the solid stock material. During this machining simulation process, SolidCam subtracts the tool movements using solid Boolean operations from the solid model of the defined stock. The remaining machine stock is a solid model that can be dynamically zoomed, moved, or rotated. It can also be compared to the target model. Okay, now let's say that we're satisfied with our outside contour operations, and we now just want to take another look at our center pocket and pocket ledge operations. Well, we can simply just click those operations in the cam tree. Then, click the Operation Step Mode button to simulate through each of the remaining operations one at a time. Note that the part model gets automatically updated according to the selected operations, and the operations skipped up to that point are a single color. Now, let's use the single step mode button to watch the tool perform the helical entry into the pocket. After that, let's click play to finish out the simulation. Now that we're familiar with our toolpath simulation options, let's exit the simulation control panel and finally generate G-code in preparation for machining our part. To output G-code for our entire CAM project, Right-click the Operations header in the SolidCAM Manager and choose the Generate command from the G-Code All submenu. The generated G-Code opens in Notepad for us to view before it goes out to the machine. Note that the file name automatically defaults to the CAM part name. You can even see here how the iMachining technology is managing the feed rates with each cutting move. Well, there you have it. Everything from defining the CAM part and iMachining data to defining an iMachining operation and generating G-code. Those were the minimum requirements you need to know in order to get started with iMachining. Good job on successfully completing your first iMachining Getting Started exercise. And thanks again for watching. For more great SolidCAM Professor videos, visit the Professor page at www.solidcam.com.